Well, good morning. Good morning. It is a great pleasure to see you. All those of you who are in the fellowship hall also, those of you who are in your car or in your home, um, just super to uh, see us gathered. We have moved inside the change of weather uh, and to make sure we're doing it intentionally rather than at the last minute. So uh, great to have you with us. Uh, a number of thoughts about today. Um, those of you who are in the fellowship hall, when it comes to communion, will come and commune first. We'll do it the same way as we do outside, come down the center, and then return this way to your seats. Uh, people in the fellowship hall will first come out on the patio in the doors and then back returning through the hallway. You can imagine that there's a lot of planning that goes into uh, changing our venue and times of worship. And um, we are still needing uh, volunteers to cover all the spaces like ushers, assisting ministers, altar guild, uh, uh, recorders, uh, and cleanup crew. And so if any of those are things that you might be able to do, uh, we ask you to contact Lisa. Uh, there is a meeting you can see on your bulletin insert. Um, it's on this week's calendar. It's the halfway to the bottom. And that is there is an informational meeting for worship assistance this Tuesday night. Um, that'll be at 6.30. And uh, that covers all of those kinds of things. Is there anything else happening Tuesday night? Yes, a presidential debate, but, you know, ah. uh, um, Also, this Saturday, we will be having our church fall work day, and so please notice details about that. On the other side of that um, insert, you can see ways to help our missionary, Didi Panzo. We're collecting specific kinds of books um, for the seminary there in the Congo, eyeglasses, and we are limiting that to reading glasses, uh, clothing such as t-shirts, uh, flip-flops, those kinds of things, and then monetary support for a new vehicle. Please notice the uh, poster in the narthex. It's a speedometer seeing how we are doing. And um, we're already up to uh, over $8,000. We're looking to 15 to 20. And um, we're wanting to do that uh, by the uh, 18th of October. We prayed for Misty Hop last week because her mother was close to death. Uh, she and David and family went to, uh, drove to California. <clears throat> And um, her mother was on life support at that point. She was able to say goodbye. Um, and then they've been out there for a week planning a funeral. Uh, they returned on Friday, and then they will be here at the second service. Do you know why? Because their uh, newborn son, Richard, will be baptized. So uh, we keep them in our prayers also. Jacob, tell us what's going on in the areas of our youth and family ministry. Is that you? <laughs> here, I'll go over here. I'll go over here. <laughs> well, the first announcement is it's great to see everybody. It's great to be inside. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very happy that we had the outdoor worship area, um, but I'm also glad that, that we're back inside. I think the outdoor worship area is a perfect example that uh, sometimes Many times, um, dare I say all the time, it's best to put our trust in God because he knows better than we do. So I imagine that when they were building that, they had no idea that we would be uh, using it as much as we did. But when we put our trust in God, sometimes, many times, all the time, amazing things happen with that. So I just have a couple of announcements for this morning. The first of which is this last Thursday, we had uh, another great youth event. We played volleyball. Uh, we had s'mores. 
We actually had s'mores indoors, um, and so we did that safely. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. So I want to say thank you to everyone who volunteered and helped out with that. We have a lot more events coming up in October, so just keep your eye on the calendar with that. Including in those events is going to be a family pumpkin carving event as well. Um, so there's more information in the scribe, but as those dates get closer and closer, uh, we will announce the dates and times for those as well. Um, also, as we're getting back to some kind of uh, normalcy, even in the middle of all this uh, weirdness, uh, we are offering uh, programs and stuff uh, like we used to um, back before um, in the fall. So in between services, we still have Sunday school. There is a nursery available, um, and it's down the hall and to the left. Um, so if you have a nursing child, or if you have a child who uh, just needs a break for a minute, you can go in there. My only request is that you sanitize everything that you touched, and then uh, uh, please just respect social distancing there as well. And then we'll have Sunday school, and then we have our um, wiggle worship that will be after, that'll be during the second service after the children's message. So as we're uh, starting to amp up programs, as we're back inside more, uh, we're gonna be offering those things up as well. So. Pastor? And, and will the uh, nursery be staffed? The nursery will not be staffed. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point. It's so, a do it yourself nursery. Yeah, a DIY nursery. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob. I'm sure there are other things, uh, but I cannot remember. We worship in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For the 
this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The prayer of the day is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. God of love, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And uh, I invite the children to um, open up their eyes and tune their ears. Is that better? Yes, I want to welcome the children this morning, both here in the sanctuary, I know those uh, in the fellowship hall, and also many who are joining us online. Welcome. I want to ask you this morning, how many of you have chores that you have to do regularly at home? Can I see your hand? Chores that you'd... <laughs> we have a father who's putting his son's hand up as well. Yep. So some of you may be too young to have chores, but how many of you maybe have helped your mom or dad with something in the kitchen or maybe something in the garage? My job growing up was I was a professional flashlight holder. I did it very well. So when my father was working on the engine, I held that thing right at the right angle, and it was great. So I remember when I was young, probably about your age, that my mother, uh, it was Saturday, which was our cleaning day, my mother came in and I was, again, pretty young, and she asked me to dust off all of the bookshelves and dust off all of the things in our living room. And she said, I'm gonna be in the next room, I want you to dust all this stuff off so when I come back, it should be clean. And I said, sure. Well, actually, I said, yes, ma'am. I said, yes, ma'am. So my mother went to the other room and I went and I got the wash rag out of the kitchen and I came back, but I had forgotten that my favorite TV show was on. So when I came back into the living room, that show was on and I thought, you know what, it wouldn't hurt if I just watched this for a minute, some of you have already jumped to, a, to the ending of the story, that it's not going to hurt if I just watch this for a minute and maybe during the commercial break I'll, I'll finish the chores, I've got plenty of time. So I did, and the first commercial break went, and then the second commercial break went, and the show was over, and lo and behold, the next show, I like that one as well. So after a while, my little rag that I had gotten fell by the wayside, and I forgot all about it, and I heard the most terrifying sound that a young child can hear. <laughs> And it dawned on me, all of a sudden, that I had forgotten, and my mother was there standing in the door like this. And then she entered into the living room, and she, with her magic finger, and she found that I had not done my chore. Now she became upset. She was not upset at me because I didn't clean off everything in the living room. She was upset because I told her, I gave her my word that I was going to do something and I didn't do it. So she got upset. I believe that when we say something, we are to be people of our word. Today we're going to hear a story that's told by Jesus about how important it is to do what God tells us to do. There's a story of two sons. And in this story, we learn that many times our actions, the things that we do, cleaning up, doing what we said we were going to do, being obedient, our actions many times speak louder than the words that we say. So let's remember this week to listen to the Lord, to be obedient, to be men and women of our word, and please listen to your parents when they tell you to clean the house. Let's go ahead and pray, and let's ask God for help this morning. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you 
for all of the gifts, all the things that you've done for us. We thank you that you have brought us into this place where we can worship. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be young men and young women of our word. Help us to be obedient to our parents, to our grandparents, and most of all, help us to be obedient to you. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Good morning. The first reading today is from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you to be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For our, you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he, therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Here ends the first lesson. The second lesson is from Philippians chapter 2. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who through he was in the form of God, did not regret equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every kneel shall bend in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father." Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Here ends the reading. Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 21. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching. They said, by what authority are you doing these things? That's cleansing the temple. And who gave you this authority? They said to him, excuse me, Jesus also said to them, I will also ask you one question. 
If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? They argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. <clears throat> but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? <clears throat> they said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So are we saved? Ah, are we saved by grace or works? Grace. Well then why all the words about work today? Jesus parable. A man sends his two sons out to work. Or Paul in his letter to the Philippians refers to work three times. And this one. Work out your own salvation. Sounds like we're saved by works to me. Is salvation up to us? Is it based on what we do, what we accomplish, how many points we have? Answer is, thank you, you're Lutheran. Paul is clear elsewhere. For instance, in Romans, we're saved by grace, not by our works. Salvation is not earned by points. Martin Luther says, we're not saved by works, but we're saved for works. We're, in or we're saved in order that we might live in ways that affect our neighbor in a good way. Luther adds, God doesn't need our works. Who needs our works? Our neighbor. The one who saved us through our Lord Jesus Christ helps us to grow more and more like him and so that we love God and love our neighbor. Look again at the text. It's the second lesson. I'm going to focus on this one. It is packed full of good things. Paul says, As you always obeyed me, not only in person, but much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation. It doesn't mean that your works gain or earn salvation. Rather, he means live it out. Work it out. Don't stop it up, but let his life in you flow. Let the presence of the Lord flow from you into the lives of others. Let his light reflect off you into the uh, lives of others. Work out. It's like having a workout, if you will. And then Paul adds, for it is God who is at work in you. Finally, he's the one that's doing it, making it flow. Say, guys, I need you to be quiet. God is at work in you. He's doing it to enable you to will, to want, and to work, to live for his good pleasure. Work it out. Live out your salvation. So all this is at the conclusion of this portion of scripture that we have. 
Earlier, Paul will say this, I am convinced that the one who began a good work in you, that's God, will bring it to completion, will help you grow, will bear fruit in and through you by the day of Jesus Christ. The one who died for us, the one who lives in and through us, making us imperfect people more and more like himself. He's changing us. We who excel in being short-tempered, or we who are undisciplined in our prayer life, or our worship life, we who tend to be self-centered, well, what's in it for me? And he takes the likes of us, and he died for us, and rose again, and then lives in and through us, and then more and more makes us like himself, Paul says, let this flow through you into the lives of others. A little later he will say, only live your lives in a manner worthy of the gospel. Not that you earn it, but ways that are fitting, ways that are appropriate for this relationship that we have in the Lord. And then we come to our text. It starts out with the word, what? What is it? Two letters beginning with I, ending in F. Oh yes, if. If. In our English translations, we only have one if, but in the original Greek, there are four. It's simply repeated. If there is any encouragement in love, if there is any consolation from, his, from Christ, if there is any sharing or fellowship, close relationship with his spirit, if there is any compassion or sympathy. In other words, if there is anything at all to this faith stuff, if there is anything of truth and reality to Jesus Christ, if God is real, if what we confess is true, then Paul says, then live it out. Let it flow. Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, the same love, full accord, one mind. Be united together in heart and soul. If this stuff is real, then let it reflect in your life. And then he says what not to do. Do nothing from what? Selfish ambition or conceit. He says don't be high and mighty. Don't be asking only the question what's in it for me. Don't be puffed up with your self-importance. Rather, he says, empty yourself. Don't be filled with empty pride. Have you ever noticed that those who shout the loudest have the greatest need to prove themselves? No, rather, he says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Empty yourself. Empty. Remember the word, you'll hear it. And then he says, but in humility, count others better than yourself. It's easy to push others down in order that what? We can feel taller. He says, rather, no. Continue to be a servant so that others may be lifted up. Humility. It comes from knowing who you are. Christian humility comes from knowing who you belong to. It comes from knowing that you are incredibly valuable because you have been bought with a price, the very life of Jesus Christ. In humility, count others better than yourselves. If there's anything to this Jesus stuff, he says, then live it out. Don't look only to your own interests, but the interests of others. And then, he says, let this mind be in you. What mind? Whose mind? Jesus' mind. Let this mind of Christ be in you. His thoughts, his values, his attitudes, his mindset. Let his mind be in your mind. 
He's wanting to shape your thoughts, your motivations, your attitudes. Live. He wants to live in your heart and your head. Will you let him? He says, let this mind, this mind of Christ be in you. And here's the good news. Though he was in the form of God, all glory, power, and honor of God the Son, he did not count equality with God a thing to be exploited, literally grabbed, held, grasped for oneself, for himself. But rather he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in human likeness. So being born, Jesus being born, what the season of the church year? Christmas. And so you picture the Son of God um, eternally with the Father before all time and space on the throne and yet he chooses to take off his royal robes, step down from the throne and be born to a poor family in a small town that hardly anyone knew. He emptied himself. Martin Luther puts it this way, O oh, you have, who have created all, how did you come to be so small? It's Christmas, the incarnation, becoming one of us, have the mind of Christ, says Paul, who emptied himself. He goes on, being found in human form, that's Christmas, he humbled himself. Think of Jesus, the night in which he was betrayed, taking off his outer garment, tying a towel around his waist, and then he grabbed what? A bowl of water, and kneeling down in front of his disciples, he began to do what? Wash their feet. He's becoming a servant, even a slave, to wash the feet of his disciples. When did that happen? What season of the church year? Lent. And then the next day, what does he do? Paul says, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Which day was that? Good Friday. And Jesus will say, before that, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Paul is painting this picture of this mind of Christ. This is our Lord Jesus, the Son of God, who could have remained distant, removed, uh, having anything he wants, but emptied himself, humbled himself for you and I. Paul then continues, Therefore, God has highly exalted him. He raised him from the dead. Gave him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, and by the way, the name Jesus was extremely common. Have you ever gone to Mexico? Most men are named what? Jesus. Same with Jesus' day. God highly exalted him, gave him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is what? Lord. That Jesus the Son is now given the name of the Father. I am. I am who I am. I was who I was. I will be who I will be. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the vine and the branches. I am the good shepherd. Jesus receives the name above every name, Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. It's the center of Christian faith. So review. Paul says if there's anything to this faith stuff, if there's anything to our belief in Jesus Christ, then he says, well, then live it out. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others better than yourselves. Have this mind. 
this mind of Christ in you. Though he was in the form of God, didn't count equality with God a thing to be held on to, emptied himself, became a servant, washing feet. Born Christmas, washing feet, Lent. He became obedient to death, Good Friday. God raised him, exalted him, gave him the name Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord is the confession that can have you killed. Jesus Christ is Lord is why martyrs end up dying. Jesus Christ is Lord is the center of Christian faith. And finally, it's Paul's call to us. If there's anything to Jesus as Lord, then let him live through you. Let his mind be in you. Let his life and light be in you and flow through you into the lives of others. Therefore, he says, back to the beginning, then work out your own salvation. Let it reflect. Let it flow. Actually live it out. Let him shape your thoughts, your words, your actions. Fill your hearts. Fill your minds. Let him shape your whole life. For it is God who is at work in you to will and to work for his good pleasure. There's an author you may have heard of What's his name? Eugene Peterson. Wrote many books, uh, wrote translation of the Bible called The Message. He died two years ago. And a dear friend of him described him in this way. He truly lived, breathed, and smiled Jesus. May those words be said of us. Amen. in the words of the Apostles' Creed, second line, you will hear that core of Christian belief. Jesus Christ is Lord. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, often we simply forget about you. Or we choose to ignore you and go our own way. Often our lives do not reflect your light or your name, but simply our own. Lord, come and fill us with your light and love. Let it be your mind that fills our own. Take our attitudes, our thoughts, our words, our actions, and shape them by your good and gracious hands. Take our lives that we might be light reflections shaped like you. Come, Lord Jesus, and be our guest. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that your hand would be upon our broken, angry, torn world. That in places as close as our own city, and as far as across the oceans, there is trouble. People not only disagreeing, but being violent about it. We pray for those who are in situations where violence prevails, where shops or homes are broken into, places that are war-torn, where there's hunger, homelessness, and fear. Lord, it is clear that most of the time we do not live as if we are your followers. We commend this broken world into your hands. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for missionaries, people willing to go to far places in order to share your hope, reflect your goodness. We pray for our missionaries, Didi and Serafina Panzo. We pray that your hand be upon them as they begin to end their time uh, here in the United States and plan to go back to the Congo. Strengthen them. Provide for them. Go with them to touch the hurting. Lord, in your mercy. For those in our congregation who are deployed, we pray for Carson, Kyle, and Sean. Watch over, guide, protect, lead, and let these young men reflect your mind and your heart in the far-fung places they are. Lord, in your mercy. For those in our congregation yearning for your touch, your comfort and healing, for Misty, Lorraine, Levon, Bev, Georgia, Ray, Jan, Mary, and the Gould family, Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we do not deserve to come to your table. We have not loved you as ourselves with our whole heart, nor our neighbors as ourselves. And yet, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, you invite us and you welcome us to your table. Lord, say the word and we shall be healed. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Turn around and wave to your neighbor. There you go. And let us pray. <clears throat> Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Signs of your gracious love, receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So I remind you of our instructions for Holy Communion. If you have a bulletin, you'll see them on the far right. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and saving that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord. For you loved, you so loved the world that you gave your only Son that all who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you prepared for us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, we look to you, singing their song, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this, remembering me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, remembering me. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen the body of Christ, broken for you. Please be seated. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sing a 
true faith confessing, the people of God is willing to hear. The supper is ended, will now be extended. The fruits of this service in all who believe. The seed of his teaching, receptive souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for His grace did invite us, His love shall unite us to work for its kingdom and answer His call. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, the tasks of our everyday life we will face. Our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, embracing as children of each tribe and race. With your feast you feed us, with your light now lead us. Unite us as one in this life that we share. Are you going to remind us? Several reminders. As you exit this room, this sanctuary, we're going to have the back rows exit first, then the fronts. Fellowship Hall, something of the same. Those of you at home can stay where you are. Those in your cars, go ahead and honk. Also, we have the new member class and Sunday school new member classes in our downstairs underneath the kitchen. Directly after this service, this room and the uh, fellowship hall and bathrooms will be uh, disinfected. So that's, that's not a diss. Take it as a compliment. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thank you.